Hello, viewers. Welcome to this very special episode of the Invincible Talks, the seventh Invincible Talk. I'm Neelam Kumar, your host and the author of this book. So why Invincible Talks? Because it's, it is my tiny effort to dispel the grimness of the pandemic with some sunshine, positivity, courage, and most importantly, hope. So viewers, I want to ask you, do heroes exist? Yes, they do. The 13 warriors in my book are all real life heroes. They have faced life's worst adversities and bounced back with positivity, smiles, and are determined to spread hope amidst society. Do superheroes exist? Yes, they do. But they are just ordinary people who choose to do extraordinary things in their chosen field of work. The cape and the mask are actually optional accessories. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me so much of pleasure to share with you that tonight I have a panel of four superheroes. And these are real life heroes who have done extraordinary work in the field that they have selected. But how do I introduce them? Let me think. Actually, global educator, globally renowned educator of Neeta Beer, life coach, uh, actor Vandana Sharma, uh, celebrated theater actor Mahabanu Kotwal, and Emmy Award winner, actor, director, Kaisad Kotwal, need no introduction. They are nationally and internationally acclaimed personalities in the fields of education, media, arts, and everything that they have been doing in society. You know, I have very treasured memories with each one of them, but I just want to share two. Avnita Beer has been my lucky mascot over 20 years and has helped me release all 10 of my books. And beloved Mahabanu, even when I did not know her as well as I know her now, I requested her to please do a reading from my book to Cancer with Love, My Journey of Joy. Guess what? She graciously agreed. And she turned it into a bestseller. So what do real superheroes need? They need a large heart full of compassion. And they need large doses of humanity. As I said, their cape and their mask are optional accessories. That is why it gives me so much of pleasure that today these four, you know, powerful voices in society, these powerful voices of humanity, compassion, and incredible talent have come here to join voices to celebrate and amplify the voices of the 13 warriors in this book. Welcome to each one of you. Avnita, thank you so much for coming. Mahabanu, thank you so much for coming. Vandana, thank you for coming. And uh, Kezad will be joining us in a minute. So uh, my first request is to Mahabanu. Mahabanu, I have been totally in awe of your acting and also of the kind of work you have done, especially in the area of stopping violence against women. May I request you to read a few lines from my new book, I Am Invincible? I will. Uh, the one I've chosen is the story of Shalini, a survivor of domestic violence. Year 1994, she woke into consciousness wrapped in the blanket of a pain so intense it ripped her soul and body apart. 
each body part seemed to be disconnected from her. And yet each limb, each muscle, each nerve seemed to be on fire, blasting electric shocks through her. Disoriented and longing to slip back into the comfort of coma, she became acutely aware of each individual cell and blood vessel ready to burst. Had she been in a car crash? Had she died? For a moment, she felt herself leaving her physical shell, flying into the air and looking down at her mutilated body. She protested going back into that broken cadaver, and despite herself, she did. And then she recalled the pounding, the violence, the thrashing she had taken the night before. Their first night in Sikandrabad, in a new place where she knew no one. She had painstaken, painstakingly cooked dinner for him in an unfamiliar kitchen, taking care to please him. She had held her breath and prayed that she would be spared those beatings at least tonight. But then they had gotten into an argument and he had lunged at her. She had consoled herself that she was used to it and soon it would all be over. When he hit her in the ribs, legs and chest, she told herself it was okay. But suddenly, through flailing fists and flying army boots, he hit her in the stomach, knocking the wind out of her. Her vision became tunneled, as if she was view viewing him through a telescope. And then he hit her in the stomach again, and again, and again, until she collapsed on the floor under his boots, holding back, her blood soaked back. She must have passed out right then. She must have remained unconscious on the floor the whole night, soaking in the pool of her own blood. This morning, as she, as she drifted into semi-consciousness, she found it hard to open her bruised, swollen eyes. Blood had caked around them and her hair seemed stiff like straw. The pain in her back on the right side of her body was so intense that she bit her lips to stop herself from screaming again. Should she overcome her fear and pride and beg for help? She was amazed to see her attacker, her husband. He had had a restful sleep on their bed and was now sitting jaunting, jauntily at the dining table. To her horror, she realized he was coolly buttering his bread and enjoying his breakfast. He seemed completely oblivious to his wife lying in pain on the floor. Thank you, Mahabano. You know, I was crying when I was writing this. And now when Mahabano reads it, it becomes more powerful. I can feel every word throbbing with pain. Thank you, Mahabano, for that powerful reading. Uh, welcome, Kaisat. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Neelam. Uh, may I introduce you again? I mean, although you need no introduction, you're such a familiar face on, you know, in ads, in films. But, uh, well, as I have said earlier, um, Kezad uh, uh, Kotwal is uh, an Emmy Award winner, actor, director, and um, I call him the genius. I really think, you know, that his brains are above par. So I have to be very careful what I speak in front of him. So, um, Kaizad, uh, now we have Kaizad in conversation with Avnita. Thank you, Neelam. Those are words too kind. But anyway, let's let's dive into it. Um, Avnita, thank you for agreeing to do this. Um, I always love being in conversation with you because you have a lot to uh, add and uh, teach at all times. Uh, let's start a little bit with um, who the focus of the book uh, happens to be. And these are people who uh, are not known to circles outside of their own um, lives, their friends, their families, uh, extended circles perhaps to work. Uh, these are not people who make the news. Uh, these are not people who are written about um, till Neelam gets to their stories. Um, and so I just want to ask you a little bit about, um, it's a two-part question. One is, um, why do we not hear about these stories uh, more widely? And uh, what is the value 
in uh, hearing these stories finally, when someone sort of as uh, empathetic and uh, compassionate and a good writer like Neelam uh, gets to tell these stories. Abnita? I think your mic is off. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you, Kezad, and thank you, Neelam. And thank you everyone on the panel. Um, it's always such a pleasure to, uh, you know, have conversation with all of you. We, we've had several conversations on various issues. So it's always nice to, uh, you know, get your thoughts and to exchange, uh, you know, uh, our, our thoughts on, on you know, uh, what's happening in the world. I think that's something that is really, really kind of disturbed uh, a lot of us. I want to start by uh, first, Neelam, complimenting you on this book. And I know that it is uh, your backdrop, but I want to actually hold this book in my hand. Uh, nothing like holding the book, the actual book and going through the flipping through the pages and, you know, seeing what is inside. Um, the, the, the name, the title of the book, uh, and I know uh, it's a very special uh, title because I know your son helped you to uh, think of this title and it's so appropriate in today's time. Um, and also the, the design, the layout, um, very subtle and does full justice to, I think, the 13 uh, stories that you have uh, inside the book. And, and the fact that, you know, um, you're amplifying the stories of these 13 warriors. And uh, what Kezad, what you said about, you know, why do we need to do that? And I think we are living in very, very extraordinary times where, you know, many of the bubbles have broken. We, we've heard about, we've heard stories and we've celebrated heroes and superheroes all our lives. Uh, but it is, you know, these ordinary people and who Neelam describes as ordinary people who've led extraordinary lives. Um, it it is their stories which are powerful. It is their stories which show, uh, you know, immense strength, resilience, um, inspiration, and it needs to be amplified uh, because these are real life people. Right? They're on the ground. They have actually battled uh, adversity in in the most difficult circumstances. And how did they do that? I think that's that is something that we're all looking to hear because you know uh, uh, we've we've lost role models today, and so we're really looking for uh, heroes who are real, who are authentic, uh, whose stories uh, give us hope. Uh, they've fought. You know, these stories are about uh, ordinary people who have fought uh, with you know um, with mental strength, and I think that's very important because each one of them has shown an immense. Uh, mental strength uh, to be able to deal with the challenge that they faced. Uh, also, um, you know, with a lot of faith. I think uh, Neelam has spoken about um, her own faith and, uh, you know, and, and, and there's nothing can be achieved unless you believe that you are invincible, unless you believe that uh, once you, you know, you take on uh, the mantle, you will be able to succeed. And also, I think some of them have also used humor. Uh, to be able to, you know, to, to look at the situation in a lighter form and to emerge a winner after that. So these stories are very unique. They're very, uh, uh, you know, uh, special and very, very, uh, you know, uh, particular to that particular, you know, circumstance. And how have they fought it? Uh, so for me, I think uh, this book is very timely. I mean, looking at the time that we're living in, uh, you know, this book actually captures the, the current pulse of, uh, you know, today's world. And, and I think it couldn't have been uh, in, you know, out uh, at a more timely uh, moment. So uh, for me, I think, uh, you know, it is these genuine uh, individuals, common people who've been fighting adversity and been winners. Uh, it is their stories we want to hear. So, um, and I think, like you said about heroes, I mean, the definition of heroes has changed today. Today, people are looking for real stories. And, and we know that uh, on social media, you know, we're able to actually get to know uh, many of these uh, real, real heroes, real life heroes. So um, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, important that we amplify the stories of these, uh, um, you know, is individuals and the way Neelam has done it. I also want to compliment that because not just the book, I think her whole, um, you know, influence through her own, uh, you know, uh, different platforms and her own followers. I think the stories have really reached far and wide and uh, we've done a great service. I think she's done a great service, uh, uh, you know, to human, uh, to mankind. Thank you. You know, yeah, I was going to say if anybody knows anything about Neelam, um, they will know that uh, the uh, journey she's been through and the adversity she survived 
uh, she's often done it with humor as well. And I, I, I think that, um, that, that that's, I think, increasingly, I think um, that's going to, uh, of necessity, have to become a survival tool for a lot more of us. Uh, because without that humor, I think it's easy to fall into complete despair. And when you fall into despair, then it becomes very difficult to uh, change, to improve, to get out of uh, those circumstances. So I think that's a very uh, valuable lesson in itself. Uh, you know, we can have this discussion at some other time, but I think the, the very notion that uh, we, we talk about these as ordinary people, uh, and I know what we mean. We mean that they're everyday people, right? Uh, people who, uh, uh, like I said, are not in the media glare, who are not the focus of television chat shows and uh, reality programs. Uh, and yet I think it's important to know that what makes those other people we call extraordinary, which are these sort of, you know, our movie stars and sports stars, they're only extraordinary because we endow them with that, uh, that labeling and that fame and that, uh, and often for very, very shallow reasons, because they look good or because they can hit a ball further than 90% of us, or even because they can make a good piece of cinema or, or write a good book. And these are not necessarily, I think, qualities that should be worshipped or admired. I think we need to reevaluate, um, particularly for our young people, um, and particularly in the age of social media, uh, because while social media allows uh, stories like the ones Neelam has focused on to get far and wide, it also brings us uh, people like the Kardashians and Paris Hilton, and I won't name some of the other Indian uh, uh, people who have used social media in ways to get famous in very, very sort of awful ways. Uh, so can you talk a little bit, especially as an educator, Amita, and I know Neelam and Mandana also in that field, um, how do we move our, our young people away from worshipping, um, you know, the Tendulkars and the Bachans and the uh, Kapoors um, and towards a really good teacher in your own school or one of the people that Neelam has talked to, what is that shift that needs to happen? And I'm not saying, I, I just want to clarify, I'm not saying that the Kapoors and, and are, are, you know, are not worthy, but not just because they can act or not just because they look pretty when they're in their 60s. You know, they, 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 those uh, standards, I think, is what's gotten us into a lot of trouble, worshipping the wrong kinds of things. So how do we make that shift with young people? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, um, Kezad, you and I and all of us have uh, discussed at length the, this issue of, you know, how do we develop leaders for tomorrow? How do we develop empathetic leadership in our children? And, and leaders are not just, you know, uh, heroes who rule or who run a company or run the country, but he, leaders can be, uh, you know, anywhere. So how do we develop the kind of leaders? And we've been uh, talking a lot about, uh, you know, this particular issue because it's very relevant. Um, and I think uh, what has happened, like I said earlier, is that the bubble right now, if you look at the situation right now, the bubble has broken. The old stereotypes of heroes have got dismantled, you know. Um, I mean, like for the last one, more than one year, we've seen that those glass chambers in which these stars were, you know, um, they, they were all placed, those glass chambers have broken. And we see them now in their true form. Um, so somewhere I think the glamour cushion has uh, eroded, you know, uh, and social media has helped a lot in that. So, you know, so they're now no longer larger than life. So for the longest time, you know, one, one, uh, you know, they were one put them on a pedestal because they were far removed from our lives, and uh, so they seemed like, uh, you know, uh, big heroes and you know, much, much larger than life. So, uh, and people today have become extremely discerning, you know, and that's a, because I think uh, social media has kind of created that awareness. So, so we have to use that, but and as well as uh, you know, we need to um, you know use programs in schools, and I think as educators. Uh, whether it's in the life skills sessions or when you do the leadership program, I think it's very, very important that we discuss these things. I mean, don't brush these uh, realities under the carpet, you know. So, um, so, and I also feel that you know recently the you know uh, God and nature have actually removed the filters, you know. So there is now no age bar, there is no gender bar, there is no income or wealth bar. <clears throat> there are today we see citizens, actual citizens on the ground who have become 
uh, who have come out to help citizens, and they are the heroes today. And and people are seeing it. So maybe we needed something like this for us to uh, to shake us out of our you know uh, this whole uh, with this illusion that we had created about. Uh, heroes and if if you look at the sikh community today i mean i would say that they used to be the butt of so many jokes but today they've become uh, you know they've actually changed the definition of heroism mm-hmm. i agree with you completely amita and and but you know the the, the the thing is the sikhs have been doing this for a very long time uh we've just now noticed it and i think we we noticed it not even when they were helping the poor but we started noticing it when the middle class needed oxygen and needed hospital beds and they set up makeshift uh places where people could be put on beds and given oxygen and given food it's it's only then when we started to sort of say ah these people are there you know yeah. so i i think we we do uh, you know tend to take things for granted just one more point on that um you know the other people that we worship and i think this comes with movie stars and sportsmen also but with businessmen we worship people who have made ungodly amounts of money and we rarely focus on how they've made that money and a lot of these millionaires and billionaires across the world uh have made this money standing on the shoulders of often very weak poor marginalized people people who have literally shed their blood to help these people become millionaires and billionaires and i think one of the things that we have to do one is to expose this first of all uh to tell the truth uh about about these people um and you know when i've spoken to your students i've often talked about exploring the myths of people like bill gates etc because the, these are the people who are sort of you know put up in management schools and and business schools um which are huge influencers on on the youth today um and i think what we need to start moving towards is is not worshiping because i don't like anybody worshiping any human being in that sense but valuing things like kindness and generosity and the ability to do well without exploitation and further putting people into poverty and marginalization um and, and i again i want to ask you just very quickly how do we make that shift in young people's minds because the older generation i think is is uh, sorry to say but kind of uh, beyond much hope in that sense yeah and i think there's a lot of disillusionment and disappointment in the youth today i mean they they not they're looking around and they're not getting answers uh, so it's very important that we send the right messages we talk to them about uh, you know the right issues and again i go back to neelam's book and i say that you know these are the kind of um, you know material literature readings that they need to do to uh, yes. you know make them feel that you know there are there is some uh, uh, there is another way out and and to, so they they see a way forward i think that's very very important um, you know i mean i i go back again to uh, you know the whole uh, concept of empathy and and yes. you know, how important it is and i uh, again as an educator i would i'm going back to my own responsibility and i think everybody in whichever role we are we need to fulfill that responsibility uh, and our respons- responsibility is that we we develop a compassionate empathetic uh, courageous uh, youth and uh, you know so neelam uh, you know for example in this book uh, you know the so she has written uh, the preface of uh, the book herself and she's explained how in fact she's actually justified to write the uh, the preface because she's been a survivor and she's also been i mean as she puts it she's a, uh, you know a thriver i think that's that's a beautiful um, you know way of putting it and what she's done from her own life and and it's actually testimony to uh, to the belief that she has that she's invincible and i think that's that's the kind of hope we need to give to our children you know positive that's- stories of uh, invincible spirit that you know you can um, uh, you know if you choose to be if you believe it you will be okay and she's not just challenged the impossible situations in her life she's actually embraced them you know i remember i met her two decades ago and she'd already uh, battled two big fights you know two big struggles and tragedies in her life and she was ready to take on more and that was for me uh, you know a huge uh, realization that uh, you know a person who uh, you know who has been battered by life with so many at so many counts uh, is ready and she's here to inspire the youth and to give them the you know the the armor to face life and i think uh, you know so one of the things when we in our discussions about what kind of a culture do we create because you see the culture of an institution uh, or a school uh, helps to build 
um, values in our children, right? So we said we need, to, we want to have a compassionate, uh, empathetic culture. And for that, it was very important that it, it has to be happy, you know? Um, I think the basis of empathy is if you are yourself happy, you will be empathetic. And so we tried to uh, create a school which is a happy school. And, you know, she's, she's so through her work, and, we, and why I'm sh uh, share talking about this is because we need more. We need to tell more stories. We need to Absolutely. have more narratives uh, of, you know, struggle and adversity and facing that with uh, this huge invincible spirit, you know, this whole uh, potential that you have in, inside you, uh, you know, so we, to give the children, uh, you know, the courage that they can break out of this, uh, this bubble that we have, we are living in. Yeah. You have absolutely hit the nail on the head and you actually addressed uh, the last question that I had for you that about empathy, uh, that, you know, not only do these uh, stories uh, reflect how these survivors have survived because of empathy, but also the way Neelam approaches those stories, I think, um, has to be approached through empathy because otherwise it becomes sensationalist. It becomes um, something for tawdry gossip, you know, which again... Uh, many people are good at, but the empathy part is, is the difficult. I've said this, Amita, and I think, I, you know, when we've done some sessions with your school, that for me, the superpower of the future is empathy. Um, you know, to kind of bring things full circle to what um, Neelam was talking about. And, uh, and I think it's going to take a, a lot more people like uh, Neelam and yourself uh, to kind of, you know, make that uh, more widespread. Uh, just one last point of observation and a question quickly. Um, you know, I, I also like the design of the book cover a lot. And to me, um, you know, the eye, which is at the top, kind of uh, becoming free into being able to fly, I think to me, is it really captures something I've always believed, that if you want to be free uh, of your own darkness, your own uh, struggles, your own pain, uh, the best way to do that is to tell your story. Um, okay. So how would you, Abita, very quickly, um, and uh, maybe Neelam can address this at the end a little bit. Um, how would you convince somebody that who feels that who's interested in my story? My story doesn't matter. Uh, after all, I'm just a teacher. I just cook for the children at school. I just make chai for the teacher's lounge. Uh, how, how would you convince them um, but why is it important to convince them that their story matters? Yeah, I think uh, one is that, you know, uh, we have to walk the talk because we can't be saying something and doing something else. So, uh, so that's a huge responsibility uh, on all of us as, yes. as adults who are especially uh, talking, you know, <clears throat> and interfacing with the youth, uh, very important. And also, um, so we may be a large country, Right? We may be a huge country, but uh, I think every life matters. And, and in school, every child matters. So one of the things that we've, all, you know, we've really uh, uh, strived to in our school is that even if it's, it's a large number in our class, every teacher would know every child in her class. Okay? And, and so the, the work of uh, the life skills coaches in touch with the parents and the teachers, you know, so it's not just jo the job of one person. I think it's a collective responsibility for all of us that we uh, don't let any child, uh, let, you know, leave no child behind. I think that's a very, very important. Uh, and, and, you know, and it could be so, I mean, there are many things. So how do we, how do we help children to deal with failure? You know, um, how do we, how do we make every success uh, you know, it's like nothing succeeds like success. So celebrate the small successes for each child, right? Um, and each individual, not just ch uh, children, I think even adults and even teachers. So I, I would say, uh, I think we need to celebrate a lot more of the, the good things that we see in life. I think uh, that would give them, you know, that would direct them more in a positive direction. Um, and of course, um, you know, we, we have our faiths, we have our, uh, you know, value system. There's always so much to dip into and to, you know, um, uh, can, I mean, help children to understand uh, and the youth. I mean, I'm not talking about children. It's the youth at large, I think, uh, because I can see there's a, we're at the cusp of a revolution. And this is a time where we really need to pitch in you know, I know it's a big uh, uh, calling, 
but um, I, I mean, uh, we are at, at least in our school are constantly trying, you know. So that's my doggy. <laughs> he also dog has a voice. Tell us to wrap it he also up. has a voice. <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's okay. an excellent uh, point to close on. And I, I, I really think that uh, we either create a revolution that's going to be safe and productive, or we will have a revolution like the past ones in history, which are uh, not so pretty to put it mildly. And I think that that's a, a really good point to end on. Anilam, one last thing I'll say that, um, as Avnita pointed out, that, um, you know, this, this Invincible, I think, is going to be for you a series of books. Uh, well, because there's just so many people to celebrate. And I think if there's anything that's positive that could come out of the COVID uh, era, because it's now turning into an era, not just a year or a few months, uh, is that you're going to get... Um, tons of stories of people who we had never heard about True. and uh, who we now need to hear about. Uh, so on that note, uh, thank you. Thank you, Avnita. Always learn from you. And uh, thank you, Avnita, I mean, Neelam, for asking me to uh, moderate this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kaizad. And thank you so much, Avnita. What a pleasure. You know, you two are two of not only my favorite people, but two of the most intelligent people I know. So it is such a pleasure to listen to your insights into society. And the school that Avnita was talking about, the viewers, that's uh, Arun Podar School in Mumbai. And uh, the empathy bit that Kaisat was talking about is, you know, uh, Kesad has come to the school and he has addressed our 16, 17 year olds and, uh, uh, you know, sensitized them to the importance of empathy. And I think something that they said was is so important. I always feel we adults have messed up this world. Now the future lies in the hands of the real treasures, our youth. So they need to be full of hope and they need to feel they are invincible. They can bring about any change that they want. Thank you so much for this wonderful uh, conversation, Abhita and Kaisat. And uh, Mahabanu, may I request you please for another powerful reading, please. Uh, I'm going to read, uh, continue the same story. Yes. What I found was this woman is really invincible. You know, she's come out of this horrible marriage and then what she has to say, in a few words later on about her life after uh, post-marriage. So I'll read about that. Sure. At 47 today, Shalini is a picture of composure and joy. And if you're curious to know how her new life is, she smiles and says, beautiful. My ex-husband was married off immediately by his parents. I've forgiven him and moved on with my life. I live alone in complete freedom. Today, my parents are more confident about my happiness and of my capability to be on my own. Professionally, I have done well for myself. I work as a senior media person in a leading media company. I've worked across regions and meet a lot of people. I have moved cities and climbed up the ladder. I'm independent. When I'm not traveling or working, I even find time to indulge myself. Shalini must take care of Shalini after all. What is Shalini's past taught her? I regret suffering the torture for 10 full years. I'm not against marriages. I've seen a lot of wonderful marriages and happy families. But I do feel families should support their daughters even after marriage. In the name of the strange concept called losing face, if your daughter divorces, parents actively condone cruelty on their child. I just feel that no woman should suffer domestic violence the government has very stringent laws today. Please arm yourself with, with information and choose to live a dignified life. Self-respect is something no human, regardless of gender, should compromise on. The trend of divorce rates in India is rising, particularly in the metros. With time, the stigma attached to it and will also vanish. But what about the individual at the center of it? Yes, moving on after a painful divorce is an art. Trusting yourself that you will be okay today after you have moved on takes courage. But it is also your first step to healing yourself. 
At first, you may need to pretend, but a day will come when you start believing in the pretense. It may not be easy, that creation of the life you have imagined for yourself. All I can say is, it will be worth it. I found these words phenomenal. You know, I mean, so many of us just decide to live in this morass because we are frightened to move on. And I think this woman's life is absolutely wonderful. The way she has moved on, the way she is. Uh, where did you find her? Uh, Mahabanu, you know, I was just sipping coffee and uh, at Starbucks. And uh, I saw this uh, lady. Um, she was ordering cookies and enchiladas. And she was such a happy soul. And she was alone. And, you know, I'm a chatterbox. So I just went up to her and I said, hi, can we be friends? And we got talking and uh, she said, but I must tell you that, uh, you know, I'm divorced. I said, oh, wonderful. Why did you leave him? And then she told me the story. And then I said, you know, this is so wonderful because I am a carnivore as far as real life is concerned. I pick up stories from real people may I please use your story? And uh, that's how it started. But you know, Mahabanu, the wonderful thing is that uh, she has agreed to come on camera tomorrow. So mm -hmm. tomorrow, tomorrow's episode, that's episode eight, will be an episode that I hope will be very powerful. And um, you know, we'll be talking about various aspects of uh, the law, and why women continue to stay on in abusive relationships. So um, to all the viewers also do drop in tomorrow and uh, meet this fantastic invincible survivor. Mahabanu, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much for this powerful reading. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, when I think of Vandana, I have always called her the voice. And it's not only because she's also um, a voice, a voiceover artist. I call her the voice because she is our very own Usha Uthu. So Vandana, would you please sing a song for us today? Thank you. Thank you so much for this lovely, warm introduction. But first, a big hello and a warm um, hug from my side to you, Neela. Uh, Nita, Mahaba, Kaizad, and all you invincible, the warriors who are attending, who are here, and all the lovely, lovely viewers. So um, I'm here to infuse a little bit of cheer um, mm -hmm. by singing a song which is connected with I am invincible. Wow. So when invincible wow. was in its, this, this is reminding Neelam. So when Invincible was in its nascent stage, one day, Avneet, uh, you know, Neelam just came up to me and she said, you know, Vandana, I'm feeling a little low. Can you sing something inspirational for me? And, uh, 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 you know, I just, uh, for a minute, I, I just, out of the blue, this song, I believe, just crept up in my mind. And, uh, uh, you know, now, on, in hindsight, I can tell you what. This song, uh, this song, we can be convinced that this song has a providential, it's like a providential boost for I Am Invincible. So let me sing, you will be able to understand it better. <clears throat> I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. You can see me running through the open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can soar. Cause I believe in me. Cause I believe in me. Oh, 
Now, don't you think this is an apt song, really? An apt song. Because it has been your self-belief, which has actually kept you in good stead and helped you against the roughest and the toughest tides in your lives. Your self-belief, I'm invincible. I'm invincible for surely will soar higher and higher. And I wish you all the very best. Hearties, congratulations. Hearties, con hearties, congratulations. Yes, beautiful. Hearties, congratulations, Neelam. Hearties, congratulations. And all you Stella warriors, just rock on. All the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Vandana. Um, you know, we all five of us, one, two, three, four, five, five of us, we actually fly and soar. You know, our togetherness is so powerful in, in ideas and in, you know, when we meet physically, it's always such a special occasion. So yes, this song, I, uh, I believe, it actually is the essence of this entire book. If we believe that we are invincible, we can overcome any adversity in life. So uh, immense gratitude to you, invincible Avnita, invincible Mahabano, invincible Kaizad, and invincible Vandana for this very memorable evening. Trust me, it has really, really uh, filled me and the 13 warriors with a lot of courage and a lot of positivity tonight. Now we can face any battle in life with the support of you wonderful superheroes. In fact, now I allow you to put, put back on your, your superhero capes and masks and do continue all the wonderful work that you have been doing in society. Viewers, thank you very much for watching this special episode tonight. And uh, if you wondered why, uh, why do educated working women continue to stay on in abusive marriages, do visit uh, episode eight tomorrow uh, because you will get your answer tomorrow. And uh, I want you to please come here, same time, same place, and let us all get the vaccine of invincibility. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>